Hello students, today we are going to discuss the human uh, go go related gene which is also called as HERG gene and this HERG gene plays a very important role in the drug development process of cardiovascular disorder. So what is this HERG gene? HERG gene is the homology of the ether ago ago gene. So first time the ether ago ago gene it was found in Drosophila. So it is discovered from Drosophila when ether was induced into the leg shaking and it was observed in the flies and that is because of the mutation in the ether ago ago gene. In 1960, William D. Kaplan and William E. Trout gives the name Ether Ego Go Gene. HERG gene is responsible for channels mediating the rapid delay rectifier potassium channel. So, this HERG gene is mainly associated with the action potential part of the cardiovascular system where the repolarization takes place and it is mainly concerned with the potassium current that is IKR. This IKR plays a crucial role in ventricular repolarization during the action potential part. The nomenclature of HERG is KCNH2 and the protein encoded by the gene, this gene is called as KB11.1. .1. It is the alpha subunit of potassium ion channel. So as you go through the structure of potassium ion channel, the alpha subunit containing this HERG gene. So this HERG gene, it is homology to the ether ago ago gene, which was observed in the Drosophila. This is the top view of the structure of HERG gene. Now, before going to discuss about the HRG gene, the role of HRG gene, let's see how the action potential work. So, it is the action potential which is observed in the cardiac myocyte. And this action potential is uh, considered as an electrical basis for the heartbeat, which start from the pacemaker cell and is transmitted to the atrial ventricular muscle and finally cardiac myocytes. So this action potential involves the movement of ions into and out of the cardiac myocyte through voltage gated channel and it happens with different phases as shown here phase 0, phase 1, phase 2, phase 3 and phase 4. So in phase 1 it leads to the inactivation of sodium channel and followed by the potassium channel that rapidly opens and close causing a transit outward current then phase 2 where you can observe the calcium channel opens followed by calcium ion enter into the cell resulting in a slow inward current that balance the slow outward that is polarizing leak of potassium ion in phase 3 Calcium channel close, voltage gated potassium channel open, resulting in a potassium ion outward current efflux that leads to membrane repolarization. In phase 3, the voltage gated potassium channel categorized as IQUR, IKR, and IKS, they are delayed rectifier current. The HERG are molecules correlated to the IKR that is rapid delayed rectifying potassium channel. So HERD it is related to IKR which is also known as the rapid delayed rectifier potassium channel. So in phase in phase three actually at voltage gated potassium channel this HERG plays important role. In phase 4, sodium and calcium channel remain closed and potassium inward rectifier channel will open 
and keep the transmembrane potential stable at minus 90 millivolt. Cardiac potassium channels are membrane spanning protein that allow the passive flow of potassium ion into flow of potassium ions across the cell membrane within its electrochemical gradient. The ions conducting or pore forming subunit is known as the alpha subunit which we have discussed in the first slide. The cardiac potassium channel is categorized as a voltage gated and a ligand gated channel. The pore opening of this channel is coupled to the movement of voltage sensor within the membrane electrical field as they include first rapid activating and inactivating transient outward current that is ITO, then ultra rapid IKUR and rapid IKR, slow IKS delayed rectifier potassium channel. So this type of different categories of these potassium channels are present and inward rectifier potassium current that is IK1. So let's see the structure of HERG channel. This is the structure of HERG channel. So this HERG channel, it containing six transmembrane drome domain and a single pore. This is the six transmembrane domain and this is a pore domain that is a single pore. Tetramer form of four subunit. The four subunit form a tetramer and alternating intra and extra peptide loops connected the transmembrane domain. If you observe that extra cellular and intracellular peptide loops are connected to the transmembrane domain. This is the intracellular part. This is the extracellular part. C and N terminal located extracellularly and S4 acts as a voltage sensor. It is given that S4, this is the voltage sensor domain and S5 and S6, they forms the ion conducting or the pore domain. S5 and S6 linker is responsible for potassium ion selectivity filter. So this is potassium ion selective filter which is there and it containing the amino acid that is tyrosine 623. If you observe in the figure, tyrosine 623 is there and phenyl aniline 656, phenyl aniline 656 are there and they are used for the drug binding process. Now, what is the long q2 syndrome because the herg gene is responsible for this long uh, the drugs which bind to the herg gene they are responsible for long qt syndrome what is that so the action potential is the movement of ion across the cell membrane that contribute to the overall electrical activity of the heart which is measured by electrocardiogram that is ecg Normally, the QT interval uh, time from the beginning of QRS complex to the end of the T wave in the ECG indicate the duration of cardi cardiac ventricular depolarization and repolarization. With the help of ECG, the changes in the action potential recorded can be monitored. So, the drugs which blocks this uh, HRG channel, they prolong the QT interval in the heart. And as the QT interval prolongation takes place, it increases the risk of torsa de pointis, which leads to the worsening patient cardiac condition and leads to the cardiac arrhythmia that ultimately leads to the cardiac death or sudden death. If you see here, the slow repolarization and here in LQTS that is long QT syndrome if you observe the HERG1 current in blue color it shows the normal HERG current but when HERG is blocked then the QT interval is prolonged 
so you will observe qt lqts that is long qt interval so here you can observe the changes which takes place and these changes can observe in the action potential graph and this you can observe and you can easily monitor these changes by surface electrocardiogram that is ecg so here you can observe the t wave it is going to change so this is the normal qt interval this is the prolongation of qt interval if prolongation of qt interval occur then the ecg rhythm can be observed like this it is called as the torsa de pointa and this will also causes arrhythmia and the death in the patient so <clears throat> many drugs are there which are withdraw from the market because of the cardiotoxicity as they bind to the HRG gene. Some of the examples are given here. These are the drugs which are uh, which are produces the cardiotoxicity and withdraw from the marketed. So considering this fact that drugs bind to HRG gene and produces the severity of cardiac problem. ICH has produces two guidelines and any drug before going for the drug development process for cardiovascular system, they must undergo this two guidelines. First is the ICH S7B. It is Guideline is for non-clinical evaluation of the potential for delayed ventricular repolarization. By human pharmaceutical describes a non-clinical testing strategy for evaluate the test compound to delay ventricular repolarization. The guideline suggested the in vivo QT assay and in vitro IKR assay to evaluate the drug QT prolongation risk. So the pharmaceutical should follow these guidelines then another guideline that is ICH E14. This guideline evaluation of the QTQC interval prolongation and proarrhythmic potential for non-arrhythmic drugs. So the if the non-arrhythmic drug are there, so still we can observe the proarrhythmic potential. Requesting that all sponsors should submit the new drug application for conducting the study to determine whether a drug candidates prolong the action potential. So, all these are the uh, introductory part of the HRG. So, HRG assay are there. So, HRG assay is widely used at an early stage of drug development to predict the drug candidate's ability to produce the cardiotoxicity. So, what are the different assay? The assays are uh, divided into three parts that is in vitro assay, ex vivo assay and uh, in vivo assay. So in the next presentation we will discuss uh, schematically what are the different assays and how these assays are performed to identify the HRG expression. So if you like this video please subscribe, like and share to your friends. Thank you for listening this video. Thank you.